Hello, it's me, it's Reki, and uh, welcome back for another reaction. We're going to watch something completely different, and this was uh, suggested by one of my Patreons, Walt, Supreme Tier Donator, Walt. Thank you so much for that. This is Tornado Alley, a real-time tornado in Joplin, Missouri, and uh, there's no information on what uh, date it was. Maybe we can get that information in, in the video. If not, let me know. This one is pretty long. It's uh, 40 minutes. Can we push through with 40 minutes of hurricanes? I can. <laughs> anyway, uh, before we go ahead and watch the video, we thank the amazing, amazing supporters of Reki, and that is the channel members and the patreons thank you so much guys means freaking everything and we have a shout out to the supreme tier donators over by patreon and now available on channel membership bob buddha squirrel david deja peggy t mag southern mom walt william and james thank you so much for the amazing support now let's get blown away that's not even funny recky it is, it is, it is. Okay, mm hmm. Let's go. All right, hold on. We're to go back. All right, hold on, hold on. All of, all of the video and audio recordings you are about to see and hear were recorded on Sunday, May 22nd and Monday, May 23rd, 2011 in Joplin, Missouri. I never heard about this. Okay, hold on. I gotta turn around. Oh, it's getting big, 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 big. That is huge. That's a wet. I got it. Uh, the timeline is approximate. All of this footage is real. The tornado has touched down in the city of Joplin. I have never seen a tornado form that quickly to a mile wide tornado. What? Dude, go east right up here. Go east right up here. Yeah. This will like the end of the world. Our house had been flattened. We did not know if our son was okay. People were being hauled away with emergency personnel holding oh just pieces my. of these people together. God. It was horrific. I never really thought that I would have friends that died in a tornado. Oh my goodness. Man, this is going right in the heart of Okay, so Tornado Alley joplin missouri does the tornado alley, uh, alley go through the entire missouri or is it just in a, uh, maybe in another state uh how long is it just stupid questions but i am super curious super curious let me know We are getting reports that uh, most of the rain has passed through there, but uh, they are seeing what uh, what people are considering a wall cloud, uh, 20 to 30 miles per hour. Obviously, some clouds have some uh, people concerned, mm -hmm. uh, basically between Galena and uh, Joplin. It was on a Sunday, and so I remember it was just a very hot and humid day that day, and you can kind of see a storm rolling in from the west. Kevin Randall. I was uh, actually attending my uh, son's graduation. It was uh, the high school graduation here in town. 9 a.m.? The skies were starting to become a little uh, overcast. You could see uh, some thunderstorms building off uh, to the west of the city. It's a storm you see coming across the uh, Kansas border now, just about to make it to the Joplin area. We also have some showers and storms across northern Arkansas. I was in the newsroom at 5 o'clock. We knew the tornado watches were out there. We knew the tornado warnings were out there. But it wasn't until about 0505 or when we um, started listening to the AM station in Joplin. KCRG news time is 528. We're live storm team coverage here on the stations. Even by watching the atmosphere feels really eerie. Like you guys that live here or experienced uh, a hurricane or tornado, uh, especially tornadoes, Am I right about that? Is it, I get an eerie feeling about the color of, of the sky and the surroundings. Sam Radio again, the tornado warning. Well, I was with two of my really good friends. 
we were just kind of driving around listening to the Cardinals and the Royals on the radio and just listening to the baseball game. The baseball game got switched over to the emergency broadcasting. I've been in a lot of thunderstorms. You, you could definitely tell that it was different. We began taking it more seriously. We wanted to find a place to just get out of the hail that they were calling for. Please do take heed. Get in your tornado shelters right now. We can't stress this enough. Take heed. This is a dangerous weather take situation. Heed. Hey, where are you at? Wow. So aggressive, though. Bonded rolls. I moved from Seattle to Joplin exactly two weeks before the tornado to the day. I was at my friend's place that I was living with at the time since I just moved here. His name's Sam, and me and Sam and his uh, three-year-old son went outside. To my west, it was really, really dark, and there was lightning and thunder. It was still, I thought, a ways away at, at the time. Five miles. I'd never had, you know, seen a storm system like this. You know, you're, you're kind of preparing yourself of what's coming next, and you really don't have a chance to prepare. Chad Elliott in the KZRG 24-hour storm center. KZRG news time is 528. Numerous calls into the station from storm spotters and listeners reporting a funnel-like cloud. Wait, wait, pull it, go up further. Get further, get further. Go ahead, do it, go ahead, do it, get further. Not here, up there. Straight ahead, Scott, straight ahead. Well, I've been chasing for about 11 years now. Even before I got my driver's license, I uh, dragged my mom out to go storm chasing because I couldn't drive. There were a few other guys that were in the car. But stop, 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 it's coming towards us. We started to notice a uh, rotation to our south down the road. Oh, lots so of rotation. So we headed south. Oh my God, I can see it. Oh, look at that, look at that. Oh my God. Oh, wait, okay, hold on. Oh, oh my God. No. We noticed bright flashes, and those are transformers on power lines exploding as the tornadic winds are hitting it. I see, I see, I see, I see. We're getting closer, we're gonna get closer, we're gonna get closer, we're gonna get closer. We're gonna get closer. We're gonna get closer. Power flash. You guys are really, 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 stop, really stop, close. Stop, 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 it's right there in the field. We're gonna get closer, we're going to get closer. Isaac, it's right there. I know, I know, it's right there, I know, but we can get closer. No Hold way, dude, no way, dude. Hold down your window, Hold down your window. Oh. Jesus. seen a tornado form that quickly from a little rope tornado dancing in a field to a only rope tornadoes that's the first that's a new word to me i am i got goosebumps because this is mother nature being really pissed off almost mile wide tornado in 20 seconds so that was the craziest thing i've ever seen in my life if you stick around i'm gonna tell you my story the first time I was in a tornado. We got RFD. I don't oh, want to make it up. Okay, hold on. I got oh, it's getting big, 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 big. That is huge. I got it. Debris, debris. Okay, okay. Big tornado. Big tornado. Go east right up here. Go east right up here. Uh, I can't. Right up here. As a chase team, we make it a priority to warn the public. We got the idea to call uh, 911 in Joplin. Hi, I'm calling because I'm watching a strong, large tornado heading towards the south side of Joplin right now. No way! It's just freaking me out. Well, as we came out of the graduation, I had decided that I was going to take my family home. I had my wife with me and, of course, my daughter and my son who had graduated. I just looked at my family, told them, sorry, you're going to have to go with me to work. And we turned off and, and went to the fire station. 246, just for information, we have power lines down on a car. We'd started getting reports of debris and damage, so we uh, discontinued emergency responses and had our crews take shelter until after the storm passed. 202, 223. I was working in dispatch at uh, the police department. I was the patrol one dispatcher. I handle all radio traffic for the officers that are on the street. I'm in service. I have control of the street. Did our paging system still work? We are unsure. We're going to attempt it. We are in the basement level of the police department. 
We have no idea what's actually going on outside or how much damage there is or anything like that. But we know we've been hit by one, and it was obviously slow moving because we were still getting reports as it went across. Air green, possible tornado, 13th of Green North. One of our officers was on the east side of town, and the tornado took a southerly turn and started heading right towards where his location was. Three, two, one, two, three, three. I'm on range line now. You can hit that line. Yeah, just uh, kind of go slow and don't uh, keep an eye out because we're not sure where it's going or where it's headed. Tornado on over Barney J. Tornado over Barney J. Dude, dude, you gotta go, man. You gotta go. What are you? Tornado, tornado, tornado. Tornado, tornado, tornado. Tornado, tornado, tornado. Tornado, tornado, tornado. The wind's blowing so hard his windshield wipers won't even work. His side window was broken out, so he's getting debris and rain inside the vehicle with him. Who's that? What's Waters? Waters, I'm in the tornado. Copy. Copy. If you can, try to find the shelter or somewhere to pull it in. Go. We, of course, took radio silence for him at that point. The supervisor on duty was trying to find out where he was. You got a way out? I don't know where I'm at. I don't know where I'm at. You just hope. At that point, you can't panic or do anything like that when you're in my position, at least. Five. That's the worst, isn't it? Officer Waters was trapped in the tornado. The supervisor on duty was trying to find out where he was. I'm going northbound, but I don't know where I'm at. Yeah, we just got that good, so we know you're okay. okay. I, I'm, I think I'm north of it, but I don't know. He did finally seek coverage under the bridge. I should have drove. Keep relaxed. I'm good. Is this going to get worse? It was me and my husband's first wedding anniversary, and we were at the Royals Cardinals game up in Kansas City. We had just moved up here in Joplin. We called my mother in law to see how she was doing and our son was doing. They said there was tornado warning. I told them to just go ahead and hunker down. We didn't know that there was necessarily a tornado. It's pretty common to be in tornado warning here in Joplin. This is KZRG. It's been a while since we've seen an actual tornado touchdown in Joplin. And obviously we hope that... I, I, I'm trying to cope with this. I'm trying to understand it. Because as a Swede, we don't have this kind of weather at all. And... Tornado Alley is like Joplin, Missouri. I'm really curious about that. You got to help me out. Damage is minimal. All right, that slew does fit. I can't see it. I can't see it at all. As we were witnessing the tornado, we also had another part of our team uh, in a different vehicle, uh, and it was Kevin and his dad. Let me get this. We were at the northwest side of town coming in, and we could see the storm, you know, coming in. And it was just black and dark and nasty. And we top a hill, and then by the time it moves over the road, it was already full blown tornado, probably quarter, at least a quarter mile wide. It's gonna cross the road. You said, "Oh gosh, okay, got it." There, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, there it is. There it is. Wow. This is going right in the heart of Joplin, man. It? It's going to go just north. But, oh, no, you're right. It is. All right, well, it's east of us now. I just don't know where. Knowing what the path of the tornado was, it was a pretty sure thing that it was going to go right into the heart of town. 
you go out and try to film this thing and it's kind of exciting to film all of the wild nature and then come to the realization that it's gonna really do some major damage and uh, tear people's lives apart. See how it's getting lazy over there? As it came closer and closer, you could actually see the curtain of rain coming at us, and then the tornado sirens started going off. We got some, we got some, we got a tornado over here. I had never heard a tornado siren before. Where are we going? Uh, he says. We got in the closet below the stairs, and so I just kind of pointed the camera out the door. The light flickers and goes out for a second. I thought, maybe that's the worst of it. When it went out that last time, it was dark. And uh, it was a different world at that time. There's probably 18 or 19. I think at that point there were probably like 20 other people and it was dark because there was no electricity. Uh, I, uh, at least probably 10 or 12. It kind of just felt surreal. It was almost like you were living a dream. The sirens aren't going. Growing up in Joplin, you're around tornadoes or you hear of them all the time. But I never really thought that I would have been the guy that dies in a tornado or has friends that die in a tornado. Hey, where do you want me to put everybody? Joplin, 2615. We have a house that has been struck. The top of the house has come down on the people. This tornado was very unusual. Number one, very wide damage path and then very slow moving. Just the storm was still going through town. I actually got out in some of the hail and wind, uh, and we just couldn't make it across town because of the debris. The 911 phone. So, <clears throat> the most dangerous, of course, with the tornado has to be the debris around it. I mean, it's pulling up everything, and this one feels like it could easily take a car or uh, even a truck with them, and by any time, it could just let go of that particular vehicle. But I cannot, I mean, I've seen movies, but I can't really grasp it that is actually this powerful. phone did not stop ringing. You couldn't pick up the phone to try and call anybody or try to do anything without there being somebody there. At one point, it shut the system down. There's a big sense of helplessness with it. People are trapped. People are injured, people are dying, and the best you can do is say, well, we'll get somebody there as soon as we can, more or less. in the KCRG 24-hour storm center. Homes are damaged in Joplin. Uh, one guy just called up. He says his home was totaled. So I just had another caller say a what? couple of houses damaged over by St. John's uh, Hospital. As a parent who had two children in the high school, it, it terrifies you to think that that could have happened during a school day. I think our death toll would have probably been much higher if it had. Whoa. A civilian actually grabbed his radio and yelled officer down because she found the vehicle with the windows all out and the no officer nowhere around. That was a civilian using our radio. A civilian using our radio. It was 357 vehicle that she was calling from. I uh something really bad is gonna happen. I can feel it. Oh, 
Right by the wall, my, my house is gone, FYI. Power line's down at about 24th and ship. I can't cross any further south. When I heard the officer down call, I immediately checked my radio because it was coming to see the vehicle. It was coming from Officer Waters' vehicle. When did our last contact with Officer Waters? Last day he wasn't moving. There was that clinch and that minute of panic, um, but I checked my radio. 270 status. I'm in a ditch just north of 241 and 44. He was safe. He was under the bridge. He was actually taking care of people at that point but it's still a terrifying feeling to hear that come over the radio at you. Chad Elliott. I think she did the correct thing. Busted out windows on the uh, other police car. I would probably say the same thing, that something is not good here. It's in the KCRG 24-hour storm center. Lots of reports of damage. Let me stress that. We, the phones are ringing off the hook. Yo, stop, stop, stop. Power down, power down. Go back to where you came. Go north. I want to go east. Okay. As we moved off, to try to intercept the tornado, we encountered the power lines that were flashing uh, as the tornado was hitting him earlier. Uh, let's, go, let's go right through downtown Joplin. We were more focused on just trying to get back to the to a main road where we wouldn't have to encounter any more debris. Don't, don't. Okay, this is where we're at. We're getting rain. We're getting hail on the RFP. We were encountering baseball size hailstones. We were actually more going into rescue mode at that point because we knew it was going right through the town of Joplin. We need to get up in the job and help people out. Because that tornado formed so quickly, I don't know how much time people had. So this is really, really, really bad. Oh, that's going right into downtown job. Oh, going to downtown. Huh? Look like it's coming in. Huh? There was a calming point there. We thought we were in the eye of the tornado. So we inside and there was just debris everywhere. See, you basically saw people's lives just all over the yard. Clothes, pictures. I remember oh. there being a torn up Bible. Things you basically saw if you just threw 20 houses together, shook them up, and then dropped them. Oh, here we go. Nearly just 30, 40 seconds after that is when everything got real crazy. I just remember it being so, so dark real quick. I just remember the trees going back and forth. I remember the, the waves of rain. I remember debris flying by the window, hitting the window. That's what it was. I just was like, man, I, this is this is bad. I could tell how bad this was, and we weren't even around the corner yet. Watching this on your KZRG storm tracker radar, and that is a big area of concern. Tornado warning still in effect until 6:30. And we expect this to continue now. We heard that there had been some damage in Joplin. So we went back to Joplin going about 85 on the highway. And there was cars passing us going 100. One thing that we are seeing is uh, lots and lots of uh, lots and lots of damage so far. We knew that our son, Connor, was OK. And we knew that our family members were OK. But we did not know if our house had been flattened. And that was just really scary. And uh, still. Waiting to get more reports coming in. In Carthage, we're getting reports of debris is falling from the sky. Well, at the at the time of the tornado, Joplin had five fire stations. Two of those uh, um, were destroyed in the storm. Wow. So basically, what that did was wipe out, you know, half of our uh, emergency response fleet. I recall thinking that if our station had been damaged, then there were going to be a lot of houses and homes that were uh, were damaged as well. Station Gas station. I feel like this is probably the the, uh, the baddest place he can be in. 
in the gas station. But I don't know. We started hearing debris hit the back of the building. My buddy was like, we need to, should we go into the beer cooler over there? Directly after he kind of you know, mentioned that, the front of the store just blew out. still around watching me at this moment say so in the comment section like i'm still here recky i would greatly appreciate it towards the store at 17 and range line has been hit first thing i've got about possibly 30 people trapped by the dress shop here kids that were in there. I remember hearing that over the older people just because it seemed so much more genuinely scared. It kind of settled down for a second and I think it's over. Right when that happened, then the second part of it hit. The ceiling dropped three feet. As the walls of the building got blown away, I could look out and just see the sky. everyone was kind of just um, either it had knocked them over or like I was sitting on top of someone's legs. Is everyone okay below me? I'm right here, I'm okay. All right, I'm Are trying not okay? to lay on someone. Somebody's on my back. Everyone was just in shock because you didn't know whether or not people were hurt at that point. This is under me. This is FM 102.9, AM 1310, and we do have uh, Chad, and Chad will be joining us now. We'll so many cars heading towards Joplin. I am understanding this could be relatives and, and family members coming out to make sure that no one got hurt. Maybe people that chase hurricanes as well. Check in with him. Good evening, Chad. Hey, Josh. Uh, I am on Raceline Road. We were listening to the AM radio station in Joplin. We made a quick decision. A photographer and I hopped in the car and just headed west to Joplin. Range line is flooding. I am plowing through the water right now. We were just preparing to, to do normal reporting, and it was just going to be a normal shift. Oh, my. Uh, there are people that are there have got to be injured right now, Josh. There are probably people, fatalities right now. People are trapped. The buildings, there are buildings missing, Josh, that used to be here. They're totally gone. Once we came in and started seeing the destruction, that's when we started to get a sense of this is bigger than what we anticipated. This is Italian one, this is Chief one. Go ahead. I have clearing skies off to the west, so uh, we uh, look to be towards the end of this. This is a course of, I don't know, just about an hour, hour and a half, maybe even less. Now we're about to see the destruction that this mega tornado did. And quite honest, I am not looking forward for it because it's going to be heart wrenching. We do have a tremendous amount of debris out here in the two area. Looks like this is going to be very near the, uh, the path of uh, the tornado. We had literally thousands, if not tens of thousands, of 911 calls in the first 24 hours. 
Most of us are used to tornadoes that move through an area very quickly and then are gone. This one took 30 minutes to get across town. 30 minutes. Normally we can get out a lot faster and start responding. We just weren't able to with this one. So at this point, I'm just going to assume that uh, rescue vehicles and, and personnel from other states or uh, uh, towns just come in and, and help out. Go slower, do debris, nails, go slower. We saw debris, but we saw houses and, and buildings intact. I was thinking, okay, the tornado brushed this, you know, the north side of town or something like that. This is bad. Oh damage. my gosh. This is bad. Damage. Oh my gosh. It wasn't until we got deeper into Joplin that we started to notice some pretty heavy damage. Uh, okay, are you talking to Kevin? What, what yeah, do we want? I don't know. Where we, I, uh, I don't know. Walking around. I, I don't know. And that's when we somehow met up with Kevin and his dad. We ended up in the same place. And I said, hey, we need to start pulling people out of the rubble. Look at that. That is destroyed completely. When we first parked, we couldn't see anyone. Nobody was out walking around. Nobody was nobody was to be seen because it, I mean, it literally just happened. People were still trying to crawl out from the rubble. Oh my gosh. Well, I was definitely not mentally prepared to see what I saw, or I don't think the other guys were either. It was a uh, total devastation. No. Look at that. At some point, it was like, we just kind of felt like sitting ducks. I said, well, you know, we probably should move, and we probably should go towards where the sun is, and so we actually headed west. What? Oh, just, I don't know, missing? Or... Got about half a block, and we saw a tree down, saw another tree down, and I remember one house there being three or four trees falling every which way, and the house was actually missed. So then I remember saying, oh, they got it real bad in this part, and then, as we're driving, there's a fence line, and once we cross that fence line, it was like a bomb went off. Oh! Oh! Ooh. You got this? People's homes. The more you went west, the more it got more serious. There's nothing I remember left. just being calm. Like, it was all this destruction, all this chaos, but it was, like, eerily quiet. You could see, you could hear the alarm, you know, like, alarms going off, uh, honking. That was the majority of the noise at that time. And in the rain, it was still raining. It almost looked like you hit pause. This looked like the end of the world. boys, as I call them, <laughs> fanned out to try to see who they could help in the area. Uh, I'd stayed behind with the vehicles. I cannot believe this. Oh, the lady out with a broken back. A gentleman approached me and said, there's a lady that's underneath her own wall. She can't get out and she's, she's really hurt. As we were talking with her, holding the wall up, uh, she said that her back was hurting her and she couldn't sit up. So we decided to get a, a door that we found in the rubble and put her on the, the door and uh, take her to a waiting pickup truck that was going to take uh, people to the hospital. Yeah, I remember the, the man with his, with his baby son, and the baby was bleeding really bad. Uh, they they had up. been in a pickup that got hit, but he asked whether we could get him to the hospital. 
We said, sure. And so we headed out <laughs> to the hospital. Broadcasting live from the darkened KZRG 24-hour storm center. Power is out. We are running on backup generators at this hour. And it was like driving through a war zone, needless to say. As soon as we topped this little crest, you could see the hospital, and our hearts just sank like, oh my gosh, now what do we do? I understand earlier I got calls from the station that the hospitals were in earlier. I'm trying to get to that side of town. They're just people, Josh, stunned. They're standing, sobbing on the... I think we lost uh, Chad Elliott. by St. John's Hospital and everything in this area has sustained very heavy damage. I repeat, very heavy damage. All right. So the hospital got hit. No, I copy that, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, my Lord. We topped this the hill, not... and it was like a scene from a movie. And then the hospital, on top of everything else, the hospital, the place that's supposed to heal people, had been hit. And so we're just like, what do we do now? We pull up by the hospital, and there's, they already had had triage units essentially on the grass. St. John's took a direct hit from the tornado that day. We ended up sending a uh, couple, three crews uh, to that area to help the St. John's staff evacuate the building. Uh, I walked up to the main hospital, uh, found some uh, fellow security guys that uh, I was supposed to work with that night. You know, we was like, we need to get patients out of here. And uh, we started from the ninth floor and uh, worked ourselves all the way down to one. If they couldn't walk, you know, we was practically picking them up and carrying them down the stairwell. No uh, staff was lost. He was all accounted for and uh, patients. There was no patients lost in the hospital that was in-house. Uh, they was all accounted for as well. We have also heard reports that some of the debris from the hospital has reached areas like Willard. A woman was reportedly seen in x-ray, uh, x-rays in her front yard, and that just gives you a visual to how far this damage is reaching. But if you think this is bad, check out this over here. I don't want to watch this. This is a neighborhood that is completely flattened by this tornado. There are dozens of people walking up and down the street trying to figure out if they're loved. It was horrific. <laughs> there was, um... Oh, shit. Couldn't even imagine. I couldn't even imagine. Even if I tried, I couldn't even imagine. I can definitely feel the... the heart-wrenching feeling of devastation I have people yelling looking trying to find their loved ones um the smell of natural gas was um something that i've never smelled before in that even in all the tornado zones that i've been in there's a whole neighborhood that surrounds the hospital and you couldn't pick out one home we have sustained a major direct hit here in Joplin. Now, Chad, you, you've described uh, some, some damage, and I, we're trying to understand the situation. And as we can understand it now, uh, Joplin will never be the same after this tornadic event. I was on the air when the tornado hit, and just a few blocks from our station, utter devastation. <laughs> People were crying, really didn't know what to do. Oh, a dog. People were being hauled away in the back of pickup trucks with emergency personnel holding, um, holding just pieces uh, of these people together. And when I was at 24th and Main, I could look all the way to the west and all the way to the east, and I saw no structure standing. And there was no end to the damage path that you could see. Dylan. Yes. Like, I don't recognize where I'm at right now. I really, really don't like that sound, though. Car is still there. 
Yeah. This, this is the Walmart here? Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you need a ride somewhere? Um, no. I'm just going to see if my car is. Okay, should be okay. right over here. All right, man. Probably Are the not. people still in there? Yeah, there's some guy. He usually is a door greeter, and he's um stuck under some brick. One of the greeters was trapped in the entrance. When we actually got around to the to that side of the parking lot, I mean, you couldn't, there was no way you could go there and just start picking up huge pieces of concrete. I don't think I'm blue when I'm seeing that. You wanna ride somewhere? And I remember seeing just a guy walking like a zombie and his, he had blood on his arm and he was just, just not present. Dude, I don't want, I don't, I don't know if I wanna go over here. I don't know, I don't wanna be stopped. Oh my. Somebody, somebody help. Do you need help? <laughs> Here, need, get in, get do you, in. Do you need to get I in? I leave, Greg's gonna come get me. Okay, Greg's gonna come get you. Do you wanna sit in the car? In the middle of the devastation is really where you saw um, the best of humanity come out. People are, people are, people are getting help. There's just people are helping, they're all throughout the parking lot. Is this for real? Y'all need a ride? Oh my goodness. Oh. They are coming back. They are coming back to see this. No. When we got back in Joplin, we had to park about 11 blocks from our house. We were hearing people screaming for help, and we were basically helpless because we couldn't pull anybody out of anything. And there was this lady that came up to me, and she asked, if I had seen a baby or heard a baby screaming and she said she had lost her 13 month old baby in the tornado and they were looking for the baby to see if it was alive or hearing cries or anything and we were absolutely helpless at that point. We didn't know, we didn't know what to say to her. I mean, we didn't hear anything. So the baby did not make it and the baby got sucked out of her arms like she said and they found it, um, I think about a couple of miles east of our house. All right, we got a couple more minutes. Again, if you're still here, let me know in the comment section. This was a long one, but I'm glad I actually managed to pull this through. Let's uh, let's let's make up a word you guys can write. So that uh, Recky, I am still here. A M with capital A, capital M. Let me know if you're still around. Pedestrian says that there's a house on top of a gentleman at the 1800 block of the wall. Copy. Oh my goodness. And we just had to walk with our sandals on all the way down to our house. There was nothing left of our house. And it was getting dark, so we couldn't even start to salvage anything. We were trying to see if anybody else needed help in search and rescue that night. Next day. Doors. Doors. Okay, we have pictures. I do not think we would be alive if we would have been in the house that evening. So I was just going through the motions at that point. I didn't know how to deal with this. I just wanted to salvage anything that I could find. So what about insurance? Is that a thing in uh in uh, like tornado alleys? Are they uh the higher or I mean the possibility of getting getting destroyed uh the property by a tornado is greater in tornado alley or it's just it's just, just me. Help me out in the comment section. Not being able to salvage anything was hard then, Nothing. but those things just aren't important. That's just stuff. You can go buy anything at the store, but you, you can't buy a family member. Oh, that guy's in the... Uh... Oh, my. Raining. 
people used beer boxes down here to as steps. My buddy Corey went over and where the wall had fallen over, there was kind of a, a break between the roof and the wall. And we kind of just shimmied up that wall. Oh, it's not hard to get out. Behind the gas station, it was pretty much just an open field. Our car was picked up and set down kind of where the building had been. There was a cow laying there that had been like hit by debris. All right, here's the gas station that we were at. We parked right over there. Our car got blown away, but the front door was just right there. No one was hurt in the cooler other than just minor like, bruises and cuts. That right there is where we climbed out. All the shelving was falling down. That's about where we were laying. I do feel really lucky that for whatever reason, I didn't lose my house, I didn't lose a loved one. There's a whole lot of emotions that go into it um, because there's so many other people in the community that were affected um, so much more negatively than I feel like I was. The Joplin tornado was anywhere from a half mile to three quarter mile wide at its widest point. It was on the ground for about 13 miles. Approximately 7,500 homes were damaged. Wow. We ended up with 161 people uh, that were deceased from the tornado. They were still doing a rescue operation and they were trying to retrieve bodies. And we heard the search and rescue dogs barking over and over. And I heard the dogs barking in my head for weeks when I would try to sleep. So a bark meant a body. My brother, there was absolutely nothing left of his house. He thankfully and his family lived in the basement. So it's just kind of crazy. I finally made it up to where my home was at. It was severely damaged. But thank God my wife and daughter were still alive. But just up the street from where we lived, a lot of people had died that day. My home was destroyed. Um, it was in the tornado path. I found out about it, I think it was on the second day, I think it was Tuesday morning. One of my firefighters who had lived down the street from me came in and um, said, hey chief, I'm, I'm really sorry about your home. And I. You know, I just looked at him and said, I don't understand what you're talking about. What do you mean? Um, you know, I figured it was still there and everything was good. And he said, uh, Chief, your home's destroyed. No. There's something to be said for how much progress Joplin has made since. Now, I want to hear the awesome, fantastic news of humanity pulling together and to rebuild that night the debris is mostly cleared and people are truly moving on we have a uh, united focus on rebuilding the city and you know coming back better than we were before we've learned a lot through the situation about love and kindness and just everybody coming together as a community it's like a family what i'm doing now is i'm finding housing for people who lost their homes and their lives in this tornado. It kind of goes full circle where I'm, where I'm still on an everyday basis in some way or another dealing with what happened. The number of volunteers that came to the city to help um, is just absolutely beyond description. You know, they're helping us move forward um, to, our, you know, our new lives and our new normal. They can't give us back our lives that you know we had on May 21st, because what we had before and what we knew before, it's gone. It uh, it doesn't exist. It and it will never exist again, other than the memories of the citizens and uh, the people that have lived here in their lives. They, I, I, there's no words. I had never heard about this. Uh, of course, I knew there was uh, like tornadoes in, in the United States, but I didn't understand the 
this one has to be one of the biggest ever to hit United States in any way. Let me know if I, uh, if I'm completely wrong about it. Uh, I said in, I said somewhere in the um, in the video at the beginning that my encounter with a tornado is just really pathetic, but it's just a funny story. I was a kid on the beach, and I could see a very small. It was about my height. I was about eight years old, and it came uh, out from the. I, don't, I can't remember if it came from the water, but either way, it took my calf, and it just. I never saw that calf again. It would just vanish. But that's just pathetic to talk about that now, to be honest. I'm going to wrap it up, guys. Thank you so much. If you're still here, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If you want to join my uh, channel members, hit join. And, of course, if you want to become a patron, check the, the comment section for that. Either way, I'm Ricky. You stay safe.